This is really cool, check this out. Watch this light as I get to my chair. It's gonna come on automatically. When I get up and walk away, it's gonna turn off. We come over here to this lamp, and when I'm back at this table, it turns on automatically. We back away, it's gonna turn off. Then we sit down and watch TV, and it all comes on. I just automated three different zones using one sensor. That's pretty impressive. This is the new Akara FP2 Presence Sensor. It can tell when you're in the room, even if you're not moving. It can tell that you're in the room when you're sleeping. It's like a motion sensor, but so much better. This thing can also help save you money, look out for your safety, and can trigger automations based on where you're at within a room. That's pretty cool. So let's take a look at why you would wanna get one of these. Now this video is sponsored by Acara. When they reached out to check this out, I thought, okay, well, I'll give it a whirl. It's my first presence sensor to try out. I wasn't really expecting much. I just thought it was a fancy motion sensor. But after using it, uh, all the different features on this were pretty impressive. You could set up multiple zones within a room to trigger automations. There's fall detection. And then there's general people detection and we'll go into all those in more detail. If you'd like to check one out, I'll put links in the description to this along with my Akara G4 video doorbell. That thing's pretty cool too, so check that out when you're done with this. This is the latest present sensor from Akara. It works with Google, Amazon, Apple, and Home Assistant. In the box, you get the present sensor, a USB cable to power it. It comes with two metal plates that you can mount to the wall so it'll just hold on with magnets. This does use wide Wi-Fi and BLE. Since it is Wi-Fi, you don't need to pair this up with any of the Akara hubs. The FP2 can cover up to 430 square feet or 40 meters. There's a light sensor on this that can be used within the Akara app, Apple's Home app, or with IFT. That light sensor doesn't show up for Google or Amazon though. Akara says this is gonna see a matter update, which is gonna give you even more flexibility. They also have some features that are coming soon. They are posture detection, so it can detect if you're lying down, sitting, or standing, sleep monitoring, and people counting that counts the number of people as they enter the room. Based on how you're gonna use this presence sensor is gonna determine how you mount it. If you want general detection in a room, you can mount it on a wall and get eight meters of coverage or onto the ceiling and get about two meters of coverage. If you wanna do precision location, so it knows where you're at specifically within the room, you'll need to mount it to the wall. If you want to do fall detection, you do have to mount this on the ceiling. And remember, you're going to get smaller coverage on the ceiling. Now, when it comes to mounting this, you can't twist this, but it will rotate on the magnetic base. Here's your range of motion. And, you know, if you want to use it as a base, you can set it down and it'll sit flat on a shelf or something. The setup on this was easy. You launch into the Akara app, you choose to add a new device, you put this in pairing mode, and during the setup, if you're an Apple user, it will prompt you to scan the HomeKit code there to add it right into Apple's Home app. Once you add it, you go into the Akara app and you map out the area you want it to cover. I would say the hardest part about it was just picking the right spot to mount it to get the coverage I wanted. Before we talk about the three different modes this has, the biggest reason to go with a present sensor is for better accuracy than motion detection can do. For example, this thing can detect a lot smaller objects and uh, smaller movements, so you can fall asleep and it still knows you're in the room. And at the same time, it can still ignore robot vacuums and pets. Another thing motion sensors can't do is recognize different zones within a space. Now let's talk about these three different modes I mentioned that will help save you some money, look out for your safety, and do some cool automations with multiple zones. So first, to save some money, the easiest way to use this is as a general presence sensor. You would set this up and then you would create automations in the Alexa app if you're an Amazon Echo user or within Apple's Home app. The FP2 can help save you money by saving electricity. It's great to have those lights that people keep leaving on turn off automatically. The problem with motion sensors in those cases is often people will program them to stay on too long and then you waste money there or they go off too soon. 
this, you have stuff on when you need it, and then shortly after you leave, it goes off for you. When you use this for presence detection, it can detect up to five people in the room, which is pretty cool. It can also detect when someone is sleeping. So let's say you create an automation, so when motion's detected in the morning, it will turn on some lights. Well, if you wake up before your partner does, it's not gonna run that automation. It'll still know someone's in the room, but when they wake up, that automation will be triggered. That's pretty cool, because I don't do morning routines for that kind of stuff, because I don't want to disturb my wife. But now, I can play around with that. In using this, I found that it's really quick. Here is a screen recording of my home app, and it shows that someone is detected in the room. But now as I walk out of the room, you can see in real time how quick this is gonna switch over to no one being detected and to trigger my scene. And there you go, it just went. For some motion detectors, it can take a long time before it recognizes you've even left the room. With this, you can see that in 30 seconds, it recognized I was gone. I found that the Acara motion and door sensors are really quick too, so check those out. Uh, something to think about though with this present sensor is that you may want to program your automations or routines to only happen during set periods of time. That's what I would do with my motion sensors so they wouldn't go off at the wrong time. But the reason you want to do that would be for a case like this. I want my lights set for my video level and I don't want them to change because it sees that I'm in the room. So I have it set up so it will ignore if anybody's in the room up until 5 p.m. Now this next mode can help you with safety for you or your family. It is fall detection. Now when this is mounted to the ceiling and fall detection is enabled, if someone were to fall, it can send out a notification. If it's paired up with the Akara Hub, it could make an audio alert or it could be used to trigger an automation. This is a great safety feature if you have someone you're concerned about. Uh, you can put some this on the ceiling above the stairs for safety. Let's say the kids are coming home from school. You can get an alert when their presence is detected in the house. Or you're away from the house and nobody should be there. You can get an alert if somebody shows up. This next feature is really cool for automations. It's being able to create multiple zones within the larger zone. This is capable of monitoring 430 square feet or 40 square meters. Within that space, you can create up to 30 different zones. And each of those different zones can create automations. So you can create a zone so you sit down in a chair, the light comes up. You create a zone for the couch so when you sit down, it automatically turns the TV on. It's pretty cool and the accuracy is really good on this. What's even cooler about this is it's not limited to just the Acara app for automation. This works with Amazon, Google, and Apple's HomeKit. Each of those different zones shows up as a sensor that detects or doesn't detect presence in there. So that light by the chair can trigger an automation to come on when you enter that zone. But as soon as your presence isn't detected in that chair, it can turn that light off. Super cool stuff if you like to automate. Here's a little of my experience in using this. I think a big thing is finding the right location for it. If you're gonna put it on the wall, it does need to be up two meters off the ground. You also don't want things blocking it. So in here, the wall that makes sense, it's above my TV, but I need to put it up high enough so the TV doesn't block it. And in the living room, you, you gotta find the right place for it. But once you have it set up, I love how responsive it is. I walk in the room, it triggers the automation instantly. I leave the room and then under a minute later, it turns everything off. The different zones, I was really surprised that as I created these zones, they became new sensors within the Apple Home, Google, and Alexa app, which is pretty crazy. When you do set this up, you do want to pick the area that you're monitoring. Uh, the reason why is that this thing has such great coverage. Someone may walk down a hall or past a door and it will trigger it. But if you trim down the area that it's watching, that helps out a lot. Overall, it's been a good experience so far. I'm definitely seeing the benefits of having a present sensor over just a regular motion sensor. In the past, I would use my motion sensors to turn lights on, 
but physical buttons like that, a car button to turn them off. Now I just walk out of the room knowing it's gonna go off shortly after. If you are into smart home automations or you just want something better than a generic motion sensor, you should check this thing out. Again, I'll put links down in the description. Go visit our friends over at Acara and check out their other devices. Uh, I've been really happy with the whole lineup so far. Another car device you should check out is the G4 video doorbell. This thing is full of first. It's a great price and it works with all the assistants. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.